Welcome back to the brunch. Of course, we apologize that we had to battle with electricity uh, issues since our first attempts to stay on air. Well, like we said, I have two university lecturers in the studio. Um, Dr. Keba S. Bojang is a lecturer at the School of Health and um, Health of, School of Medicine and Allied Health, and Seth Matijau, of course, political science lecturer at the University of the Gambia. And later, I'll be joined will be joined by Esan Jai. This week our topic of course will be major affairs in the, the country over the last couple of days as well as a look at the literary circle of um, the Gambia. That's why I have Dr. Bojang who had written a lot in the studio and Esa too will also come uh, with his take as we'll take a look at the uh, issue of authors and writing in the Gambia. First though, we pick up from where we end on our first attempt, uh, Seth Mati, we're talking about the Aki issue. The Presidential Commission of Inquiry that has been set up to look into uh, the whole problems. According to the government press release, they want to go to the bottom of the issue. So about 70 children dead, uh, reportedly because they consume contaminated syrups imported from India. How did you first receive the information when you when you when you when you get to know about it? Yeah, I mean, for for me, I think it was you know I saw it um, you know when the first news broke, like when you um, say there was a mysterious death, and I think the estimated number was about thirty at the time. 30. Yeah, at the time, yeah. and 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 for me, my reaction was that this was a national tragedy. Mm. Um, not expecting that the numbers will increase all the way to seventy. Yeah, and I think this makes it um, more a national tragedy where we basically, um, you know, there have been a lot of lapses uh, within our own institutional and regulatory frameworks. And that's why we're seeing that. And I, and I think when it came, a lot of people were very angry, um, you know, because definitely if any Gambian died, it's a, it's a failure of governance, especially, um, you know, when it, has, when it has to do with uh, with a medical process, or if I may call it that, or you know, the use of um, of, of medicine as, as as the official communication has been, and 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 so I think um, we don't know exactly how many people have been affected, mm -hmm. and and I think government need to communicate with the public on that. It's not just about the death. If seventy people died, um, how many children also suffered in general? I think it should be. Um, part of the wider conversation, at least so that we know the extent to which um, you know the damage has been ha has been caused. But I'm also, I mean, of course, I, I would say like um, I cannot say that I'm happy, but of course, at least it is good that the government is taking a step where they're going to go um, having a, a commission that looks into this issue. Mm. And I think for for me, what they should do is not just to focus on um, on the current um, uh, issue, but more, look more broadly on on the way. Um, or even how the, the medical or the, the pharmaceutical ecosystem is so that they will be able to um, ensure that there are preventive mechanisms that are put in place. But so far, um, I, I think there's been a slow process in, in addressing and also communicating with the public. And, 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 you know, still things are not clear in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the minds of many people. A few things come out of this thing. One, um, there was uh, apparent violation of well, there was a, a scarcity of quality control mm -hmm. facilities. Mm -hmm. There was no lab. Lab, exactly. That's one. Um, there are, appears to be conflict of interest mm -hmm. among the people who work in the regulatory bodies. Yeah. Most of whom themselves are, I mean, pharmacists who, you know, they, they call it partnership. Mm -hmm. They don't want to say they, they rented their license, but they said they are partnering with uh, importers of drugs. Yeah. Uh, the police and even the government admitted they believe there are conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. want to go into the bottom of that, for example, people who work in the MCA, that is the medical yep. a, and, and pharmacy council, to see whether mm -hmm. there are conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. uh, and the government believe there are because they came out with preliminary report finding which suggested that, yep. that there are pharmacies who actually are not, um, they are not, adhering mm -hmm. to the uh, I mean regulations laid down for example if you are a pharmacist you're supposed to supervise I mean the stores that you yeah. rented your yeah. I mean license to mm -hmm. that's not happening because they're working full-time as, as, as you know officials in these various regulatory bodies either as pharmacy council or medical mm -hmm. control mm -hmm. agency mm -hmm. that has also come to light yeah. Yeah. and the other thing that also 
came to light is perhaps, um, and people want to know, why is the drug specifically made for Gambia? For the Gambia. Yes. I mean, I, I think for me, there's definitely there's been, you know, the first issue, the lack of lab. I, I, I think for me, you know, this speaks beyond the medicine. It, it talks, um, it speaks to all the other issues that we are importing. We are, we are an importing nation. Yes. You know, you know, we we hardly produce anything here, so everything that we use, or most of the things that we use here, we import it outside. So it means even the food. Sometimes you hear expired food and all those different stuff. It shows to to a fact that there is a huge gap when it comes to, um, you know, understanding or even um, looking at the the um, the quality of right. the goods that are coming in. But of course, you see, um, you know, usually I I argue that the Gambia is a small state. You know, one person will. Uh, do different function but I think when it comes to the medical and when it comes to other issues there's a need for um, for clear, greater clarity because at some point you cannot be the judge the jury and also the executioner mm. and in this case I think it's only Gambians that are given the um, you know pharmacy license and if these are the people that are also expected to to, to regulate the process, and these are the same people that are also renting. Yeah. I mean, sometimes the economic interest yeah. would supersede, you know, even the regulatory and other. And I think there's a gap. There's a gap in terms of the regulatory framework that they need to that they need to address. But of course, the question is also, I mean, um, what should these people do? Is it that they should leave the MCAC and then join? Because of course, at some point when you finish, you have a degree, you might tend to look at where I mean, the, the money is greater. But of course, maybe this is an opportunity that has to be there but for me i think it requires that there needs to be investment um in the in the medical field uh, because of course it's not only the those in the pharmacy but you also see people in the you know doctors and others also going into the private sector, private sector. and at some point it, it it can create issues um you know especially where there are supposed to be regulations i mean people that are supposed to regulate are honorable salah of uh, doi mm -hmm. only recently yeah. uh, at a press conference said uh, it is because the doctors, our doctors, yeah. uh, worked in the public sector, exactly. are underpaid. Very, yeah. and the government must consider paying them very well yeah. so that they can remain in the public sector and wouldn't have to be motivated to go to the private sector. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you will want private sector to operate because at least it will absorb other people that are and not create there. Employment, yeah, create yes. employment and all that stuff. But then, you know, the kind of country we have yeah. the small size but of they the country they should compete with the public yeah they should compete with them and, and yeah and, and and that's why you know in in many places the public sector cannot compete with the private sector because yeah. of the conducive working environment, environment or even the amount the of yeah amount of money and you know we're seeing that the cost of living is increasing and all that but i mean this should not all um, be an excuse but if you're given a responsibility you need to you need to focus on the responsibility but of course the problem is not only pay you know, sometimes the problem is also you hire somebody to do a work and this person cannot do the work because there are no tools available. Like, for instance, if we expect the pharmacy council to be or the medical control to be responsible to mm. look at um, the medicines that are coming in. They don't have don't, a lab. Yeah, they don't have a lab. I mean, how are they going to do their function? And even in government where they, you know, collect taxes and, you know, pay salary and they don't have enough money to invest in development. And so, I mean, the, the, the problem of this country is, I mean, it's multifaceted. But is this, is it, is this a misplacement of priorities or, no? because, or, or, or ignorance? Because if we know that, if we, we know it can be that uh, medicines that are brought into yeah. this country needs to be checked, otherwise yeah. they can be detrimental to our health. Yet nobody in government, you know, realizes that this, there is a necessity for quality control so that we know what comes to our pharmacies. Yeah. So I, I think there's How that much money do you think would be involved in that? <laughs> I uh, mean, to, to it, set up it, a lab it, or... Well, yeah, it cannot be, it cannot be, it cannot be, it cannot be more than the millions we are hearing coming from every corner, every time. Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, you see, the government... The government uh, would say infrastructure is our priority. Is, is it, isn't having a full-fledged lab that will save uh, people from dying? Is that not as important as a, as a road? It's, it's very important. If you look at most of the surveys, people will tell you that health, healthcare is one of their number one priorities. Priority. Because everybody gets sick, everybody wants to be taken care of. But the gov this I government mean, keeps saying yeah, infrastructure. I mean, infrastructure. Yeah, because infrastructure will get them re-elected. I mean, because if, if the but medical, if, if but, the medicine but, is... But, but people, things like this can get them unelected. Of course. If, of course. if the citizens are aware that people yeah, yeah. like this case have really damage reputation of yeah. the health ministries you know why i mean a lot definitely definitely because for for them i mean and i and we argued about that because infrastructure is so tangible people will see it they say oh we have constructed road but they're not investing in human security 
mm-hmm. and human security has to do with the healthcare, the education, and if you look at all these different sectors, the social sectors, basically they are going down in this country, and I think that's the that should be the priority because if you build roads and there is nobody to use it, I mean, what is what is the issue? The current so, challenge is the high cost of living the health of the population, and I think even agriculture, production, yeah. these are issues that government need to prioritize. And, 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 yeah. and, and, and of course, road is important, but you, you prioritize. But then for me, the other issue is, um, I think you cannot remove corruption out of it, you cannot remove mismanagement out of it, but you also cannot remove, I mean, um, you know, you mentioned ignorance, but for me, the greatest is the, is the, is the fact that we are not investing in research, we are not investing in understanding the, the, the challenges that this country are facing, particularly in the, in the health sector. Because, I mean, Gambia is a small country. To do research here, you have MRC. And for government to say we don't have the capacity, we don't have... I, I don't want to believe that. Want to I mean, for me, understanding what government is supposed to be, yeah. I mean, I don't understand when government make excuses. If you could, if you could go out to, you know, get, to, to, money get to millions do, yeah, and, or do. billions on roads, yeah. I mean, if, if, if an essential thing like a lab that will prevent people from... Yeah. Con- from consuming contaminated medicine that will kill them, come on, that's, that's inexcusable. It's inexcusable, and, and that's why I say it's a national tragedy, because we haven't been doing what we are supposed to do, and that's basically uh, what is happening. But imagine, we are talking about 70 kids, you know, 70 kids that, you know, that we are supposed to protect. And, and, and for me, outside the, uh, the, the medical issue, this is also showing how we are neglecting our children more, more broadly. Because these are people, I no, mean... I mean, it's not just children. Because where you have lack of quality yeah. control, who knows? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the paracetamol tablet, I've, I might be tempted to take, could, could have been contaminated. Yeah. Who knows the septum syrup we are taking? Who knows the penicillin? Or, 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 nobody knows because yeah. there was no control. There's measures. no control. There is nothing they to... Could, yeah. they, another, you know, let's say, another bomb is, could be hiding, waiting to be... <laughs> We're waiting to, re- to explode. I mean, we, know, we don't know because we, nobody's business to control or to check whether the exactly. But, are the, but this is also creating fear, especially even for people to go to pharmacies, to pharmacies now. or even hospital. You know, I mean, it's it's it's, it's gonna create that. It's there's gonna that, it's, that, it's that, gonna create a yeah. floodgate of people going to traditional 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 medicine, medicine, medicine practitioners now. Yeah. Our, uh, our expert is in here. He's keeping quiet. <laughs> <laughs> but doctor, you 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 definitely have to come and enlighten us. Yeah, we are, we are we are we are laymen. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> because our viewers will say, look, they have an expert sitting next door. No, uh, just I your personal to, opinion. No, I know, no, of course. Like a disclaimer, because I work uh, a disclaimer for, for, yeah, 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 for yeah, the right. Ministry of Health. Yeah, but how do you think we can go around these things? No, f- uh, like free I said, from, from politics and all things. No, yes. from the beginning, I mm. I'm not sure I'm in the right position to talk about this, being the staff of the yeah, Ministry know, of yeah. Health. Yeah. So I'm. For me, I think let me wait for the, the section. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, now we the lay people. We, now, let's, let's, yes. we focus on the policy now, issue. Now, yes, now exactly. let's, let's let's look at it. I mean, mm-hmm. the minister of um, um, of health, he said, well, people who are calling for him to resign, he said, I mean, he thinks that resign, resigning in the heat of the crisis is just taking an easy way out there. That's not the way to solve the problem. He said, there are people who told him. The last thing you should think of is resigning, because if you resign here in the middle of the crisis, uh, with all the good things you put in place and all the good work you have been doing, that would be an easy way out. So you shouldn't expect to listen to those kind of things. But then there are others who said, look, he supervised, he presided over a lot of blunders. The, the, the medical control agency personnel mm-hmm. have conflict of interest. They were not supervising the pharmacies. They are violating the very regulations that should guide their professions, all that is happening. Mm-hmm. There have been a lack of quality control, etc., etc. That somebody, some head should be seen to roll. At least the government must see that some consequence, you know, something, some, somebody has to bear the responsibility. As it stands, nobody's bearing the responsibility. Everybody's saying, let's march on. This is just a mistake. I mean, you see, you see, this is the this is the mentality, but this is also the we have yeah. from, from the United Kingdom the whole yeah, government yeah, yeah. collapsing. Collapsing within forty five <laughs> within forty five <laughs> days, two yeah. governments collapsing over just a mere mistress. Nobody even died. Just yeah, a mistress. Mistress. And, you know, one just resigned because she I used her you. private email. I mean, somet- sometimes it's the, it's, the, it's the governance culture. And sometimes, you know, people think like resigning is about, 
you know fixing a problem but it's yes. about also giving confidence giving yes. people say well we've i mean people make mistake but when you make mistake and, it's and, also and, part and, of owning it up and on the contrary resignation gives back credibility to yeah, exactly to yes. yeah, but but people don't see that people because don't they, see. they they, they look at it they look at here the problem here is they look at everything from politics yes yeah okay it's because the opposition or it's because of these people or it's because of that yes. i mean but we are talking about 70 70 people, kids yes. we are talking about 70 kids yeah. we are talking about a whole feature yeah. of this country and we are the ones missing that and somebody is telling us in the middle of crisis this is beyond crisis Absolutely. this is this is this is more of I mean, you, you know, a disaster. The, yeah, it's a disaster. Yeah. There's a moral, there's a moral question, but it's also so lack of, um, you know, that people that are given a position to to handle, they are not being delivered in their job. And if you don't deliver, I mean, why should you be there? That's the question that people need to need to need to ask themselves. If they cannot deliver, they they move. And when you're talking about seventy children, I mean, for for me, I would not wait for people to tell me to to, to go. go. But I but think if, if they would not go, huh? why wouldn't the government be reluctant to make them go? Why wouldn't the government say, look, I mean, this whole thing happened. Somebody has to pay the cost. I mean, seventy people died. Okay, I mean, the people who are supposed to know better are all conflicted. Somebody has to go, but the government is reluctant. To make people go, yeah, yeah, because, why? Because it's the it's, it's the government attitude. Because the government, you know, for for the government, especially at the office of the president, they see it more from a political point of view. When GRT say that um, you know um, some people should not this industrial action should not there, I had should not minister, be covered. They yeah, I had a minister saying that some people supported it. So oh, what they, they, their attempt has always been trying to divide the population in terms of oh, but these people are saying this, but other people are saying, saying that. that. But when it when, is when actually the right thing is yeah. what you should so, focus on. So we ignore the right thing. thing. We ignore as, what's supposed to be because, done because my supporter thing is this. Is this and, and my so opponent said things. Yeah, so but then be, what is the what is the, the right what is thing good? to do? Yes, what is the right Thing and what is good for this country yeah. because this government need to build confidence yeah. and this is not building confidence okay. this is not and we trusted that with all the 53 percent that borough gained this yeah. second because in the first um first time he was just blaming everything on the, on the coalition the coalition, the mm. coalition. now it's 53 percent mandate yeah so anything that has been done yeah. is in his name yes. and this is he's responsible for and that. he said he was going to govern as if somebody was no longer interested in he said it's not going to be business as usual uh, i don't know when will he start acting when 70 people died i mean this is uh, i mean when are you going this is, to get this is, business this get is into business when 70 people died and nobody pays for it this is beyond, beyond business as usual yeah. and for me the worst part of it all is like comparing like the, the the previous yes. you know they're looking at it as child mortality yes but this is this, this well is that was a disaster they had to come that they had to come to repair that this when the president's speech somebody put in this president's speech that uh, actually the very i mean mm -hmm. i mean the the, the the mortality rate is not very much at variance of the past year that was very offending offensive you, to people you're, you're talking about 66 people dying within what what but month? of what do they die yeah, even, yeah. even if of, people, in fact it should be a shame for anybody to yes, say that yes. this amount of people yeah, died in yeah, the yeah, previous yeah. year yeah. that itself should be a shame yeah but the, but but this shows the lack of i mean like we don't think about the 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 next generation exactly. we don't think about the weaker ones we don't think about the children we don't think about all those things yeah yeah all we think about is our position but then and i think they, they realized that. that was a mistake and, was the, a and, mistake. and the ministry had to come and organize and and apologize for that offensive language in the presidency yeah. and blame themselves for putting it in the president's um, you see uh, speech so you see it, it comes to the point that the whole government uh, i mean the people who should have advised the government uh, are either not telling the president the true picture of the situations or even if they do i mean they always win his heart not to take action against them i mean it's a problem you see the first thing that this government or people in government sometimes i i say that my my issue is mostly with the politician but sometimes it's the technocrat the that provides some yeah. of this um information and, and and for me um you know i i think the issue basically is that we have a government that is absent Absolutely. government that is basically not i mean present don't i mean they don't listen to the people they might be hearing but they don't be, react based on what the people are saying and yeah. if you if government is for the welfare of the people i mean I, I think that they need to they need to act based on that but then the other issue is um you know we have a government like i said that is basically absent so they don't care about what the people think what the people say they think like they're just there to help the people instead of working for the people and 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 use and this is what you so, see every so, day so what do you make of the commission the the, the three four-man commission they said there should be a supreme court judge there's going to be a lawyer there are going to be two others uh people there i mean there have been other commissions over 
over over over over crisis but we had very little about those commissions the 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 trrc came out and said never again never and, again. and and we've seen that the initial steps that have been taken because the ministry of justice when the trrc was on they said that we need to wait until the report is out, the report is out. and now they have when i the think they've suspended out. other people and right. all those different stuff those are not suspended yeah now. now i mean but you're talking about never again mm. in terms of loss of human life human and now. violations but now on the other way there are a lot of people that are dying right now exactly and at some point, people will start comparing these figures in terms of the number of people that died on the Jame and the number of people <laughs> well, that died on the Bible. Didn't I hear the human, was it human rights or the TRRC? They yeah. said they will consider the, this the death of the children as a, as a human it's, rights issue. It's a, it's, a, it's a human rights issue yeah, because, yeah. I mean, the, the children are there. They talk about the protection. Yeah. I mean, we're not protecting our children. And this is it. And you really, they I are mean, in the I mean, streets. The, they are everywhere. I mean, so for me, the commission... You know, they say that have a love is better than none. At least it might help us to understand certain things. But it's also showing a trend that in, we are very reactionary. Instead of doing what we are supposed to do, we wait until issues happen. At some point, well, if something happened and everybody died, who is going to set up a commission again? Ah. And so sometimes, you know, I, I think one of the methods that we need to start using in this country is to learn from the Jawara days. We are preventive mechanisms. Absolutely. We are put in place, but instead here, we just want to wait until the incident happened and we start thinking and trying to but make even sense if, of even if, we, even, if we, even if we wait until the incident happens, I mean, nobody bears a consequence. Nobody bears I mean, responsibility. By, by now, at least some, some people, even if they are not suspended they or whatever. should have either resigned yeah, do it or, or be, be made yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So but that's where the problem is. You know, no, no. If I mean, they, for, for me, sometimes I feel like, I mean, we, we have a government that's supposed to be, and, and sometimes people think like, I hate government. No. I mean, yeah, I want is. government to be, to be responsive. Okay. Because if we are the beneficiaries of government, therefore we expect them to be responsive. But if we share the country, we are paying people... I mean, of course, I'm paid from tax, yeah. from, from the tax. But if we're given responsibility, yeah. I think the, the least that we can do is to see how best we can do it. I mean, mistakes do happen. But for me, I don't see this as a mistake. I think this is a national tragedy. I mean, that need to, accountability even, needs even to be there. Even if it's a genuine mistake, there, somebody should pay the price for it. Of so course, there must be accountability. There must yes. be accountability. Yes. 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 there must be accountability. And, and if they said, the government said, I mean, President himself said, it's going to govern now as if, He's not interested in re-election. That means it will not be business as usual. But it's business as but, usual. But is. If, you, if 70 people will die and we see business as usual, I mean, when are you going to act? That's where the problem is. When are people going to be responsible and be accountable? I mean, we, on, under this government, mm. is do as you feel. It's everywhere. Is do as you feel because that's what I mean. That's the attitude that has been. And that's, that's what has been the order to begin. The, yeah? the, the, the crisis in the fuel. Uh, sector, petroleum sector. I mean, the, the, it is it, it the the truce we had yeah, in yeah, the impasse, yeah. uh, according to the stakeholders, mm -hmm. is just going to be temporary. Yeah. So we were looking out for another crisis. They, they now place the hope on the vice president, uh, thinking that he can work out a, a permanent solution to the mm -hmm. problems. You heard about that too. The the the, the OMCs, that's the oil marketing companies. Yep. Um, first threatened to go on a strike mm -hmm. last Monday. But then after yeah. the discussion with the vice president, they arrive uh, at, 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 at a, an agreement. Yes. The vice president wanted him to give them time mm -hmm. to work it out. Mm -hmm. And they came out there saying that they believe that it is only the vice president who has a listening ear to their concerns, who is more considerate uh, to their concerns. Yeah. That the finance ministry, they didn't name them exactly, but they said the other part of the government they were dealing with were either not telling the, their colleagues in the government the true picture or oh, we are just uh, reluctant to take in their concerns. Yeah, I mean, again, if, 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 they, if, if people could say that they have negotiated with the government, they felt that one section of the government, the, the relevant yeah. authorities, are not listening to them, and they have to go to the vice president now, and they found him to be more accommodative, <laughs> more understanding of the issues. Where are they, where are but, but, but this is also where the problem is. You know, I mean, <coughs> is government speaking in one voice? Is, I mean, is, is there a government? Is there a government that say this is the way that we should go and then people move in that way? If the, the Ministry of Finance is supposed to be the advisory arm and if they are, you know, if they cannot discuss with the OMCs, I mean, I think that's a problem. The OMC said yeah. they could not trust them. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like, they, they are business. You know, in this country, you cannot talk about free market. Huh? The professor is here. You cannot talk about free market and then expect people to, to, to go on losses. And, see, and the, gov the government said it has, it had to do away with a lot of millions, not billions, they said, in terms of subsidies to get it che cheaper for the people. 
and 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 but the, the OMC is saying that um, they too have themselves uh, had to do away with a lot of money and they cannot operate at a loss and this the fundamental thing is there is no even forest there is no foreign exchange and the letters of credit the letter of, um, the letters of credits that mm -hmm. the banks have given them have not been serviced and the time they were contracted uh, the rate of the dollar and yeah, now yeah, is, is far different and now if these are not serviced the suppliers who supplies them will say yeah, yeah. we're not going to give petrol anymore i mean well, i mean you can you can lose here they, but but for me the point is like um they're not going to suffer is the, the rubber rubber people no, but every day, day. They, every they day. Suffer. Well, I mean, they, yes because the I mean, maybe they have they have they have their the own government time. reaction was this blah blah yeah, yeah. or they painted them as greedy people yeah. a lot of people even myself i, I had that's, I that's, sometimes that these people are greedy but when we got them here and you got them explain their case you don't know even know where to put the blame. I mean, let's 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. let's, the, let's quickly he's, welcome. He's, I, I say he's the resident <laughs> professor, <this>. so <laughs> our <laughs> resident analyst. <laughs> analyst you yeah. found us on dealing with Akia <laughs> now, uh, but the, the whole overall thing is uh, how is government really treating these issues? Mm -hmm. Waiting until they are explode, there, are, there is an explosion already, and then somebody come to say, "Oh, we should have done this and should have done that." Yeah, I mean, I, I think I will have to disagree with Sid that I'm a professor here. He's the, <laughs> he's the one and he's my boss in, in civil society. Anyway, but um, I mean, generally, like this has been my assessment of this government. Um, we have a government that is more reactionary and not proactive um, when it comes to issues. Um, some of these problems that we face, um, the signs have always been there. I've said it here um, the other time when we were discussing the Aki issue that you know at some point there were signs there mm. and people started talking about this few weeks even before um, it was confirmed that 66 children died mm. but it seems like um, a lot of people did not pay attention and the government did not also take it serious it was mm. only when the double hecho issued that alert yeah. and the public outcry like mm. i always say this government is used to scandals at some point they respond based on the public outcry mm. when there's something something happens you know, and people start talking about it, that is only when they take it serious. Yeah. And that was what exactly happened in the archaic incident like your issue. If the double HO did not come out, probably, you know, they would have just, just they would have just downplayed this and nobody will take it serious. Mm. Um, the same thing also, the petroleum, the, the the petroleum, petroleum crisis, issue. I mean, you know, the, the signs have been there always. Even mm. if we look at um, flooding in this country, every year the signs are there. Everything flowing, every <laughs> year flooding. And they call it national disaster. Then, yeah, they will, they will not prepare in earnest um, to prevent these things. So the same thing with the fuel crisis too. Um, it shouldn't get to this level. I think there was an opportunity for the government to um, you know, look for ways of um, reaching an agreement or compromise with them. I'm not an expert in that area, but I think the Ministry of Finance um, really have a very big role to play mm. um, in settling this problem. Um, it, it can't be business as usual. We mm. cannot be here every month we go into fuel crisis, you know, people have to suffer to get to work and, you know, go on their errands every day. And then the government will have to negotiate. And then, you know, we have to sit for a month or two again, go back into the same problem. You know, governments are created to find solutions yeah. to mm. societal mm. problems. So, and the solutions are should be lasting solutions, especially on issues that affect the daily lives of the people. Life. Yeah. Well, at first, the government made us to believe that uh, the oil marketing companies are greedy. They are trying to take the government ransom. But eventually, uh, I mean, the government has to capitulate, call them and assault them through the vice president. But, yeah, but these are politicians. That, when politicians speak, they, <laughs> they speak with a political language, in okay. a political language. But the reality is that the, the OMCs uh, yeah, actually yeah, have like, a valid point. Ex exactly. Like, what I mean by politicians, when they're speaking, they speak in a political tone, in a political language, because they're talking to the ordinary people. Yeah. Um, just like um, what, I give an example of um, the Banjul project. When the president granted an interview to QTV and he was asked about the project, he said, in fact, our development partners did not want this project to go ahead. I had to stand to make sure that it went. So he's talking to an average Gambian. He's a politician. So that the politician out there, or the average voter, a Gambian will say, ah, the president is really interested in development. of The, <laughs> the unsophisticated but, <laughs> but Exactly. But the development partners gave three pieces of advice. Absolutely. And one of the advice was advice. strengthen your GPPA Act or regulation. Okay, exactly. it's especially when it comes to the single sourcing. Yeah. But the president will have to know how to de communicate that language. Yeah. He wouldn't come and say that, but you know, indirectly he will say, 
our development partners did not want us to go with ahead with this project. I have to stand firm. So the people who say the president really cares yes, about our, our, So accurate. these are politicians when they are talking. Ah. Um, they know how to frame their language well, and, 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 help, and help misinform people as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. misinform and misinform. Yeah. The reality is sinking now that uh, the OMCs actually we are not crying wolf. Yeah, but then for me, the you know, with the OMC issue, and I looked at Pura's release. Mm. I mean, the the argument was why do we why do you have to go out? And then, you know, uh, tell the public. It shows that, one, the government is scared of public reaction. Ah, well, you know, yeah. and... and uh, but, but if you are scared of public reaction, why don't you do the right thing? It has to eventually all? come to the public. I mean, it will come to the public. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that this government need to realize. That this is not Gambia of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you can't. It's a new Gambia. It will have to come out. Yeah, it will have to come out. Yeah. Whether, you know... The already third thing before we go to the books. Like, remember, we have a lot of time... We will have a lot of time dedicated to uh, literary matters in, in Gambia. Um, the last thing was the recent um, uh, issue about the airport. I mean, uh, this airline, operated by, I think, by Gamma Experience, um, uh, they came out with an audit report that says one, our airport uh, is not uh, completely secure in terms of fire uh, protection from fire, and also uh, the environment. They said it's full of garbage, mm -hmm. uh, which can be detrimental to aeroplanes because it can attract uh, birds and we all know of course birds affect uh, aeroplane engines um, that's what they said the government came swiftly to say that the the third fire service truck lorry whatever uh, it was the problem that one was faulty that's why these airlines these operators audits found it to uh, one thing but then a part or parts have been flown in and it has been fixed as we speak maybe it's already fixed according to the Minister, we minister wanted us to believe that it's already fixed uh, at the moment, or would have been fixed by now. And we also saw garbage being horridly collected around <laughs> the airport. Just to, we understood that is uh, put there by, by the Brigama Area Council, that's collected from Brigama Area Council and put down there. We saw it being horridly collected there. So, what does this tell us? Um, you say you've been talking about reacting to things. How did we fail to realize that we should have three fire service? trucks international standard walking at the airport i mean for first of uh, I, I, first I, I think we 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 just look at our airport as local but our airport is an international airport an of international course. airport yes. you know they they are expected international standards that need to be that yes. need to be set yes. and where that that is not in existence yeah. people tend to i mean companies will look at that because they also bring in people they are concerned about those issues but i'm very disappointed to hear that is um, you know a, a local government area council yeah yeah you know like at least for for them the least thing they could think about is to dump you know, who well, is but, there? But it, I mean, people say that is not the civil aviation authorities yeah, yeah. Um, uh, fault. But then, of course, <laughs> how do we fail but to know that bringing cabbage near uh, the airport field uh, can be detrimental to aviation because it will attract birds, yeah, yeah. which are dangerous to uh, animals? We, I mean, we is saw it been horridly removed, though. Um, you know, over you see, the last, I saw videos of it. Like, you, you know, for, for me, I, I, you know, when I look at our government, sometimes the way they react to stuff, uh, you know, when these citizens talk about issues, they just play a dumb eye. Ah, they until, will just talk. Until it a problem. Yeah, they'll just talk and then it will, it will be <laughs> over within, and they, and, within and two, and three days. And the operators said they're going to cancel four of their first yeah. flights to Banjul because of those reasons. One, deficiency in our safety in terms of protection for, for fire from fire. The government admitted that uh, the third one, the third um, uh, fire service truck is out of service. And they try to deploy uh, all fire service equipments uh, in the country, but they are not compatible with the, with the one needed for the airport. So they have to order a fl I mean, parts for that. And that's, according to the minister, should have arrived or been fixed already. Maybe that, uh, that, uh, that area is solved. But then, and like I said, the cabin. But yet still the flights. Yeah, but yet still the flights are cancelled, or is it? Well, well, that particular operator, yeah. and they are very critical to our yeah. to our tourism. They they still say that unless that is done, they, they could also be bluffing because I mean they just want it to be done. I mean, it's not easy to cancel <laughs> flight because of commercial <laughs> reasons. They could also be bluffing, but then it comes to I mean it's reputational damage yeah, yeah, yeah. to, yeah, to Gamb destination Gamb Gambia. Gambia's, <coughs> Gambia's airport is not a busy one as well. You know these things are regulated by ICAO. Yeah, of course, there are regulations. regulations. It gets back to the point of the government being more reactionary 
are not proactive to issues. Um, they just wait for the damage to be done, and then they start thinking of um, solutions. But it also goes back to the point of um, the security report thing. Um, ah, that people ah, are paying yeah, 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 elef elephant in the room. Exactly. <laughs> so if, 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 if it is meant to, if it is meant to secure the airport, secure the airport uh, how could, where, where how, the how could they fail? Uh, uh, That's why these gentlemen refuse to uh, pay. You haven't seen pay. I uh, know, <laughs> and they haven't and come for you. No, no, no. But they, your passport well, is not here. My passport is there, and even my ID card is there. Even <laughs> well, if I have my birth certificate. For, for me, I didn't. Yeah. How do you get all that? I know. I came at the other time. I was in Dakar, so I went by road and then came back with the flight, uh -huh. and uh, so they they still have that. So I mean, uh, even they ask you to pay, you refuse to pay again? I will refuse to so pay. You refuse to pay Even twice. if I'm coming with my bad certificate, I will my, refuse to Myself, pay. even in 2020, when I was you reporting pay. from the UK, I did not pay. Oh, told them but they didn't see you anyway. Because I remember, you know, the draft constitution was rejected on a Tuesday. Ah. And I left London on Wednesday. Oh, you came so in. So I was already so mad. You came in. And $16 million, million dollars it was wasted. <laughs> Why would you ask me to pay $20? I said, but they didn't pay. see your passport as they did. Nah, they did not. They oh. just took our addresses. It's not, it was only me. Some uh, people did not pay. Ah, and see. they just took addresses and names and all that. But, but they didn't come for you to pay. Because they, nobody has ever called me up to now. To ask no, no, they're them. waiting for you when Maybe you are going from, back. From because here they here have your call. name in the book. From here they will call you. Bring, <laughs> oh, bring, bring that money. Forget about you. Anyway, we so the, 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 security, the security report. I mean, what people are paying, all these, um, the money should supposed to address that. But for me, it was a strategy for um, a group of people to loot resources, mm. to get something. Because I cannot imagine in this 21st century, when a country that's supposed to fight corruption is encouraging people to pay in cash when you get to the airport, mm. to pay in cash, I cannot just imagine. Yeah. I mean, if you tell me that there is a system, either you include it in a ticket flight or that will be the you pay by a card or whatever, but you come to the airport and you know pay $20 cash, you give it to somebody, you don't even know where that money is going. Yeah. At the end of the day, we have all these challenges and people... And the president, even the president said that method. Said that method is where the problem is. He, according to him, it is for development. He didn't, why in the first place? What did, kind of development? He, he didn't. He didn't. I'm know. not sure of any airport that is doing this. He, Let me speak for myself. The well, in, in Sierra Leone, there, there, but Sierra Leone, yeah, Sierra Leone. The other time when I was coming back, so yeah. you know, we were, I was discussing this with colleagues from Sierra Leone. So for them, they have to pay twenty-five dollars entering and twenty-five leaving. And so it's for the them, it's security yeah, yeah, it's security report. It's the same fifty by cash. Yeah, by uh, I'm not sure exactly how the collection is. But whatever done. way you pay, but, you pay, pay, you pay but it, it must be cash. You know, this, this people. Whatever they, way you do it, it's, yeah. it's, it's payment. Yeah. It's yeah. payment. Yeah. But then the, the problem for me is like you know, but in my airport, meant, if they are meant to secure the airport, uh, or, or, or work with the civil aviation to ensure that it's, it is security has reached international standard. How do they fail to allow the fire service? Lamin, fire, fire is not enough. Lamin, their security is about taking your face. You know, like that's why I say, like they're creating with the security report. The security that they're creating is like they're externalizing the border. They're controlling people that are coming in. But my issue is like while you are protecting the border at that level, but you are creating the border. You are creating more problems inside because I mean, it's the poor people that are coming in, that are paying, because diplomats don't pay. What do you mean by the yeah. the people who are coming? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, like, it's the... It's the scanner... The SIS, the SSS, the SSS, should know who's coming and going out, and yeah. with, who, with what kind of so, body. So the project is more like a scanning machine and all those different stuff, taking your finger fingerprinting. Which the SS, the triple S can do, and the civil aviation can do, the immigration can do. I mean, but then, but then you the know... The police can do Yeah, it. so while you are doing that, like now tourists are complaining about that, people are complaining about that, you might not be able to... The monies that are supposed to be spent here, it has been given to few people to do whatever they want to do, at our own expense. You know? Well, we now ho we now been told that it will be going to be collected. Well, it's going to the government. Uh, well, the national assembly. At least something is coming out of that with the national assembly. Because but why can't it? Be so, the... People want to know why can't it be stopped or, uh, at all? I mean, because this is a contract, it can have implications. And for fifteen years, we are supposed to pay that for fifteen for years. For fifteen years. Yeah, imagine that. Imagine paying that for 15, 10 or 15 oh, years. I, 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 yeah. I, I, I can see many people following your example. Yeah, yeah. But, they... but for how long, if you need your passport, if you were. Uh, somebody who always fly all the time. You I will mean, have, you, you will have yeah, yeah. I now I don't have plans to to travel. Even if there are meetings, I cancel it because at the end of the day, for me, I mean, why do I have to be kind of enslaved in my own country? What 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 makes it even sad for me is like your first point of contact is people collecting money from money you money. and not your not the immigration. I mean, and and for me, the other side is that it is immigration that is also helping enforce this. Oh, and I you know, and, and I don't and think so, they like it themselves. Yeah, I mean, uh, but they, they, they sometimes like you know, you cannot be forced to do things that are not within your mandate. Yeah, yeah. and for me, that's the problem that I have with them on this issue. Well, and this is 
one aspect, even the people responsible for tourism, yeah. they, are, they are the direct uh, authority over them, they don't like it. The minister and the, the various departments have spoken against this. They said it will affect tourism. It is affecting tourism. Yeah. Like I, I keep telling my mom works in the my mom works in the tourism sector even way before. They're in the class market. Mm. Sometimes tourists will go and then tell them like, oh, you know, instead of buying stuff, they say they're gonna pay airport airport, a, 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 yes. airport tax. Something, you know, um, no matter how small it is, thousand dollars is good for small businesses. Class Absolutely. people, you know, is, is they pass money. But today, you know, they're taking that away. That's why I said you're building security fences, but you're creating more internal security. That's why today when young people don't have, we are talking about 270 million being lost. How many kind of boreholes or water could that provide? Uh, How many jobs that, you know, enterprises that could be supported? Yeah. You know, small businesses and all those different stuff. But that money is all going away. Absolutely. We're not saying anti-foreign investment, but then let them invest in things that, you know, will add, you know, good practices, will good deals that the country will benefit. Absolutely. But today you train people and at the end of the day, there is no job. You create job for somebody else. And they tell else you a lot of money has been wasted somewhere. You... You, I mean, you really it's, it's the reactionary like as I mentioned. Yeah. So now, um, finally, before we go, of, co or of course, the IEC. Um, not long ago, as I picked a personal quarrel with the <laughs> IEC, <laughs> he, he, I mean, he said, uh, and, and so many people said his view when it when was put on, on, on social media, yeah. that uh, why do they have, uh, uh, as the world will say, uh, Samba, how do they call it? Samba, Kumba Mo Amdeya, Kumba Mo Amdeya, Kumba Mo They said uh, you you were particularly uh, unhappy that uh, the National People's Party uh, have not been penalized or been been asked to call their Congress within the time as stipulated by the IEC. So you said the, the IEC is, is is not partial, or rather is 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 not impartial as far as that is concerned. Um, why? What do you th why do you think uh, the IEC is ignoring uh, that part of it as far as the NPP is concerned and other political parties, um, ignoring their own laid down rules according to you? I may not be able to say exactly why they are doing that. Mm. I wouldn't be able to speak for the IEC. <clears throat> Anything I say will be speculation. Mm. Um, someone might say, well, it's because it's incumbent. Someone might say, well, it's because of some other reason. What IEC knows better. Mm -hmm. They are in best position to tell us why. But is it not the is it only the NPP that? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm I'm coming to that. Uh -huh. I don't know why specifically mm -hmm. the NPP order. You see, the IEC has to put its house in order. Mm -hmm. For me, it's not only about the failure of the NPP mm -hmm. to hold Congress in this stipulated time. There is one thing also people have to talk about. Mm -hmm. That is, some political parties in this country have to be deregistered. Oh, yeah? Because yes, but how many do we have? There now? are a lot of we have eighteen registered 18, political parties. Uh, Some of time. them don't meet or fulfill the requirements in line mm -hmm. with the elections act. They don't have regional offices. Yes, yes. offices in all the regions. Yes. I've talked to a politician in this country, yeah. who is a top member, official of a political party, who said if the IEC should come for us, even my our political party <laughs> will, will be deregistered. <laughs> they know it, and the IEC know this. At their level, they know that if they go out for some political parties, they'll be deregistered. Mm -hmm. So that is why I always say that my assessment in terms of laws in this country, we have not taken a complete departure from mm -hmm. the IJMS era. Mm -hmm. We still have the 1997 Constitution. Mm -hmm. We still have the Jamme Elections Act, we call it. We still have the Public Order Act in this country. We still have all those repressive media laws in this country. We still have laws being violated in a broad daylight. And we claim that we are in a new Gambia. We claim that we are, we are transitioning from dictatorship to democracy. When you are transitioning from dictatorship to democracy, there are certain complex realities that you progressively mm -hmm. realize. Mm -hmm. But there are certain, ones, certain issues that are so basic. Those are laws. You must be able to do those ones mm -hmm. at the right time. Mm -hmm. Now, the INC has to go out for these political parties that are not complying with the Elections Act and deregister them. But not only that, the issue of the NPP October 29, 2021, yeah. right to know and do yeah. that. is the Democratic yeah. Union of Gambian uh, yeah, and yeah, activists yeah. said knows about, yeah. knows about them. Yeah, I don't they wrote to the IEC, but when they wrote to the IEC, the NPP responded. Because right. it was right at the time, they were right that, okay, they could not hold Congress because they were not even two years yeah. at the time. Mm -hmm. NPP was founded in December 2019. Mm. So oh, December January. 2020 oh, was supposed to be mm -hmm. two years. Mm -hmm. But they responded to Duga with very 
unpleasant words or statements to say we are not even two years yet. Duga went back and said fine. But after the December election, Duga came back. Yes. Shortly before the National Assembly election. Yeah. And said, I you see, we are reminding you. Yeah. It's two years now. Yes. But what happened was even the communication director mm -hmm. was refused or refusing to answer yeah. to those queries. Yes. I remember we were supposed to have him here. Yeah. He did not come. Yeah. Somebody, a journalist called, I, contacted him and said, that I am on leave. I cannot talk about this issue. It's only the I, big boys who can talk about it. They said they said they would not respond to. They don't. They refuse people, to respond who, on the issue. Yeah. The MPP is violating the law in a broad daylight, blatantly, and the IEC, as the referee, is ignoring it. And the entire Gambia, nobody is talking about it. Mm -hmm. We hear that APRC, UDP, and other parties. I think APRC and UDP, mm -hmm. they will hold Congress in December. Yeah. NPP we, is we, not we, even talk about it, talking sure about it. It is the biggest political party in the Gambia right now. Going by election results, NPP is the biggest party. Yep, yep. But yeah. if NPP will hold Congress in December, Cham, by now people will hear about it. Yep, yeah. But they are not even talking about it. And the IEC is ignoring. People have talked about these activists. I remember Madi Jobates, newspapers, yeah. have, media houses wrote about this. They contacted the IEC and they are ignoring everybody. What, why should NPP be the sacred cow? Why should they be, should they be treated yeah, differently? Yeah, yeah. So for me, if we are having party incumbents or incumbent advantage in Jami era and we want to depart completely from that, mm. we are having the NPP, I mean, violating the Elections Act. Probably even the APRC was not doing this because APRC was regularly holding Congress. Well, Everything yeah, yeah. They were holding Congress. Well, Jami yeah. could have blatantly ignored the Elections Act, mm -hmm. but he, his party was holding Congress. Yeah. So if the NPP is not doing that, not abiding by that, and it shows like they don't care, why the IEC, as the referee, why do you doesn't think the, also why care. Why do you think the, IEC, uh, the, the, the NPP is reluctant to hold elections? Uh, well, well even, even if you, you see, I mean, pre well, President, uh, Barrow, President Barrow has been very calculative in his moves. Yeah. Even if you look at um, the you know, elections, after the elections in December, mm. he refused to set up a cabinet. Mm. He had to for wait months we did not have a cabinet. Yeah. And people said that, that well, was we had, he was we, waiting for we, the outcome of we the National Assembly we, elections. We had one, but it's of the same nah, well, they, they even confused yeah. terms and they said nobody should say caretaker cabinet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an interim cabinet. Yeah, they yes, said nobody yes. should use the term caretaker cabinet. Yeah. cabinet but cabinet. he was calculative, yeah. trying to know which political party mm -hmm. will bring political capital to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those that did not bring, you saw some of them that you know endorsed him shortly before the election. Mm -hmm. He did not give them any political rewards. Mm -hmm. Because for him, they did not bring any political capital okay only the APRC that were able to bring something for him on the table and he was that's what we call comparative advantage even yeah. in economic terms in trade mm -hmm. when you are trading with somebody economically what do you have to put on the table okay so but for me the, the conversation should move beyond this people yeah. who have to hold the IEC to account yeah. and now I am tasking mm -hmm. civil society yeah. opposition parties mm -hmm. Well, they could have challenged even the let them test the strength yeah, of our even judiciary the, even the parliament they could have challenged elections. They could have challenged those candidates that won yes, under the NPP yes, ticket yes. to court. They then challenge their elections. If yeah. they cannot do that, mm -hmm. now civil society, I don't know how this could be done. I'm not a legal person mm -hmm. or whatever, but civil society opposition parties could now challenge the mm -hmm. IEC somewhere, yeah. whether in court or somewhere, yeah. to say that the rule, the law must be upheld. Well, you right. can't be blatantly violating the law. We, for the good and heaven's sake, mm -hmm. we are in New Gambia, we call it. Absolutely. Why will laws be valid and everybody is silent about yeah. it? He's yeah. got a valid point. I, I mean, mean the clearly. Law says they should. They should, they, every political party should have clearly uh, a congress mm. within two years of its existence. And they, in fact, and the in the past, a precedent has been set. Yeah. NCP was suspended here. Yeah. But, Dumb. but then they said those were. Yeah, those, those, were, those, those were. They had two congress. Two no, no, no. Yeah. NCP, two congress at some point. But yeah. Dam of Lamin Wajuara, yeah. the late Lamin Wajuara, mm. faced the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. GDP, Gambia Democratic Party, yeah. faced the same dormant, thing. Yes. So we, we had that. And I see at some point with issue warning. I had a conversation with the communication director. I said, what do you people do normally? He was like, okay, we issue warnings. Normally we issue warnings and all that we alert them. I said, why are you not alerting the NPP now? Mm. Well, he, he just smiled and said, well... He has a valid answer. point. Um, I, mean, I mean, clearly, you see, you see for, you know, he always talk about democratic consolidation. And yeah. you cannot consolidate democracy if the laws are, yeah. you know, are just being there. And yeah. for me, I always argue that IAC need to have a, you know, they need to bite. Yeah. You know, it cannot be an organization. They have the power to, to do all these things. They, would, they should yeah. be seen to be fair. Yeah, yeah they I should be seen to be fair. That's fundamental in their Exactly. They should, exactly. Seen, because, they should be seen to be fair. Yeah, because even, you know, and, and, and sometimes, I, I don't know whether it's the fear of the registering, creating controversy, but once you do your job, do your job, forget about the rest, because you have been given that power. But now, I mean, 
if, if they, will see them if they could not stick to their guns to to to, to withstand James uh, uh, James on oh James illegitimate claims of victory if they could stick their guns mm -hmm. why wouldn't they stick their guns to get a political party to, to their do a congress obey the rules that's, that's and, and so now we have on up to december for them to to do a congress to do a congress yeah and and then, then, so uh, even uh, if we according to SR, there's no sign of it in fact. <laughs> well, because the orders have already is, yeah, I, started NPP is a big party if yeah. NPP will hold congress in december you would, you would have had the noise at least the sehumbalos will come here and tell you something about it <laughs> ah <laughs> maybe i should ask sehumbalo when are you going to do your congress yeah, yeah. I, I think they need but to. then the issue is not the npp so to speak it should be the iec yeah, yeah that's why the second letter, when Duga wrote the second letter, yeah. I vividly remember, I think yeah. Sidi Yaya was yeah. interviewed. Mm -hmm. He said it is not for them to answer. Absolutely. Yeah, that is not something they have to answer. It's the IEC. And he's right. The IEC right. has the people who are supposed but, to take but action. But it's the IEC that also can help, you know, put our electoral process in good shape. And, 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 and you know, allowing these people to continue like this is, is The first is also thing they should show, in, you know, their, their impartiality would be, of course, to apply the same rules to everyone. Of course, of course. Everyone. Congress should be Congress. Yeah, yeah it should be Congress. It should and they be. have to. Our political space is convoluted with a lot of political parties that have no... That is why... And this one is talking about... about, the I'm talking about <laughs> they, 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 are not, they are not even food, fit for existence. <laughs> and that is why they, they're running. I mean, some of them are just after talking about, around. around we talking yeah. about Congresses. The APRC and the UDP are planning one in December. Jan -Jambri, in Jan -Jambri, yeah. Almost the same area. Yeah. Same yeah. area. Only a few days apart. Yeah, yeah but uh, it's, I mean, it seems uh, like I mean, it's Jan Jambri here. Yeah, Jan Jambri here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you expect uh, political uh, changes in of leadership? And leadership in the UDP and the APRC. Oh, the APRC. Well, you, we must say the faction led by Fabakar. Well, it's the APRC. The original. The, yeah, that's APRC. the original APRC. Well, you know, you know, that's what that's in fact. Yeah, that's what they want to be known. For, just for, APRC. For, for, for UDP. Mm. I want to believe that. I want to believe that. Yeah. Because it's yeah, could being be a party. No, may not be a secretary general and yeah. party leader. Yeah. Um, could be different from being a presidential yeah. candidate of standard bearer. Okay. I want to believe that Mr. they Dabo, will maintain Mr. Dabo, Dabo as, as secretary, secretary general, general and party leader. But when it comes uh, to for stabilization purpose within the party, and but, then but when heading to comes, the next election in December 2026. Yeah, I'm not saying that. They no, but if they, if they if they want to do that, I mean, it it would be better. Uh, would, don't you think it's better for them to do the changes now so that the new man can prepare? The new man can, yeah. But I yeah. also I also think that Otherwise they have options. Otherwise, it would not look like any change. They have options. Yeah, whether to have an elective congress or non-elective congress. I'm not sure. Yeah, there are elective congress, no, but that's, I, that's I think that's a congress. That's a national. I think congress. I think mm. I think what is going to happen is that I am not seeing signs of the leadership changing this congress, in the sense right. that at least. Um, if the UDP is really interested in changing the leadership, um, we would have seen the signs, especially with the passing, probably, or the potential, yeah, but, 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 the potential but, individuals but that they could, could take over. They could, they could keep that to themselves until the day. I mean, I mean I'm trying for the interest of the party. If I told they are eventually going to change the leadership, which, is, which can be expected now, mm -hmm. wouldn't it be better for them to do it now so that people will seem to be believe that okay there have been changes and the yeah, new man yeah. or the new leaders there is could, advantage could, and disadvantage there, there, there is advantage well, because if you wait, if the, you other, wait on, the other side also is that you see <laughs> no, but you if you wait until december 2016 no 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 I mean, not, 20, not to wait till december 2026 you see you can always name a flag bearer yeah, yes. at any time that you want okay do you understand you can unveil that but okay. the party i mean it has advantages that people will know the person and all that yeah the that's election, right the person will know familiarize but then yeah. Also, oh, the I other mean, side will start see, working. They see that was a unifying figure within yeah. the party. Uh, okay. That if you want to bring a crisis situation where if you want to bring a new leader, some might think that okay, what are they trying to do? Because there are people in that party that still believe in well, that's Dabo. expected. I, I, mean, mean, the yeah. I mean, but that's expected. The yeah, that, of course, of course. But I think also, Chan, yeah, the really, our political party parties really need to be serious when what it comes to changing, changing what leaders. What about the APR? Yeah, I'll come to the APR. What about the APR? You think, our political you parties, think Fabakar will give now to Babeli to our, our political parties really need to look <laughs> inwards. Yeah. Um, leaderships that mm. have been there for far too long yeah. without bringing the desired results yeah. really have to give chance to young, transformative. Yes. Yes. I mean, it might not be young, but transformative. And that's more up for the UDP transformative now. Transformative and proactive and leadership. Oh, yeah. oh, or, or do you want we to bring seen, Doi also in this? We have period? seen no Doi Hanifa has said he's done with representation now. So I think people like Mr. Dabo, you know, and others in other political parties that have been there for long, mm. I think this should be an opportunity because leadership is not about mm -hmm. you alone being there, but it's also about, I mean, preparing. 
You see, that yeah, you should build yeah. that mutuality between you and the followers. But what and when you do. build that mutuality, you're supposed to have a success on plan. Continue. Today, yeah, even yeah. If, I, if I serve in a leadership position, like, okay, what is happening in UK? We have seen Prime Minister, sort of serving Prime yeah, Minister yeah. for only six weeks. <laughs> yeah. And they will hold elections recently, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then somebody will come and take over. And that's so, the so, one part. Exactly. So <laughs> if, if we are saying that, <laughs> yeah. okay, we, UDP is afraid that if Mr. Dabo leaves, it might create a the problem. Then it means that there is a failure in fact. success on plan yeah. within the UDP. And this yeah. applies to a lot of political parties. That's why we say that most political parties in no, the Gambia, I think, I think, yes, sir, most political parties the in the Gambia have been I personalized. Think I think the fundamental difference, that's why you've come now. Whereas in the advanced world, such as the Conservative Party, example, the political parties belong to the people, yeah. including the leaders. They all belong to the people. But in Africa, political parties belong no, to the people. I, I, who, that's what I'm saying. People who set up see, the parties. That is why, that's where the me, problem is. Even in our politics, yeah. we have not taken a complete departure. Yeah. You know, the old style of politics is still here. Ah. That, okay, the old style of politics have been political cooptation, extending political yeah. patronage, and that is what is still happening. The political parties, political should parties belong also, to the supporters. Also being personalized, yeah. high handed, in yeah. the sense that if there is no UDP today, or Dabo today, you're thinking of crisis in UDP. If there is no Adam Abaro today, you're thinking of crisis in NPP. Mm. The same to DOI, the same to other parties. Okay. And even um, some recently formed political parties, like um, Citizens Alliance, for instance, mm. when we engaged Dr. Sisa here, I said, why didn't you resign? When your position was no more tenable, your party came out and said, your actions were out of, uh, was out of misjudgment. Why didn't you resign? He said, well, if my resignation wouldn't have brought problem within CA, I would have. So that shows that he even thinks, these new he parties, he owns them. even these new parties have been personalized. Yeah. That if you are a transformative leader, a yeah. proactive leader, you yeah. should be able to look even without you there. Somebody should be able to take over. So it oh, shows that even the new the, parties that are coming are not showing any different with the old parties. The, issue is the, the personalization. Part, the party should have structures. That should enable people to succeed one another. Yeah, yeah, Particularly yeah, yeah. if you get unpopular, somebody else is coming. So the I party think, should have. That I think structures. really political parties need to really work on that, especially yeah, the leadership right. themselves. Yeah. And, and hand over. And if you that, feel like you cannot what, deliver the desired results, and, and, and that is what we lack. Yeah, for somebody that, to come. That's why for, for for people who are outside observers of the political scene, that's why they bemoan this present state of CA yeah. and others because they hope yeah. those people are. The People who will bring in yeah, the, new the, the new the new mentality in leadership mm -hmm. that political parties will have structures that will mean that you uh, you belong I mean you belong everything from the party and the people who lead them belong to the people so if you get unpopular somebody should be able I to think, succeed I think our, I think our political leaders I mean say, say this is something that yeah. as academics um, at the university we have to Look think of our political leaders need to go do leadership training ah, leadership well, leaders. <laughs> I mean they need to get these ideas leadership is not this is not all about yeah. politics okay I going mean, to the voters selling your ideas or not but how do you lead a political party well, that's to where gain the power? power? If you look at you look at but look at look now at Britain now Britain. I mean the, the the only thing that is saving the Conservative Party is this but fixed term. The, there's the fixed term uh, rules in their constitution, which means I mean, if, if you, you win a five time as a uh, if you if you win four four years or five years as a political party, you have you have I mean the you have the right to rule uh, up to your end of your five years. Yeah. I mean, you, you, all you need to do is this prime minister is not popular, change it another one. Yeah. The people can only have a choice after the five years. But the prime minister can call an early election. For example, yeah. this man who will come, uh, which will, will it be Sunak or Boris Berg again? I don't know. Mm -hmm. He can say, okay, you know what? I think there's a lot of problem with I think trust. Boris will just yeah. Let me call a snap yeah. election yeah. now yeah. so that I renew confidence in us or the people vote for the Labour I think but, I think the British system definitely works for the British. Yes, I of mean, course. you know, like what I mean about trust. Yeah, it's about trust yeah. and also trust delivery. Is not there you go. But if you look at also the history of our political parties, mm. our political parties were basically formed for the purpose of gaining independence. Yeah. So it was Absolutely. not about you Absolutely. know Power. like like the labor, how the labor emerged mm. from the workers and yeah, all those things. Exactly. But here parties were separate from the labor unions. Of course members of the labor union were a part of that. That's, that's, that's why yeah, yeah, that's that's why that's, <laughs> that's why all these parties, you know, like with so the, after even PPP they know how you know that yeah it. UP all of this that's why he was talking about issue of cooptation. Because yeah. at the end of the day it was about the leadership. And yeah. in terms of the finance it's, it's now that we see people are contributing towards political parties, particularly with UDP and you know and others. But if you look at the history of the political parties, mm. I mean they, they 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 were established for a purpose. And even the post 2016 parties, you know, most of them were also trying to rush for the new found, you know, yeah, democracy. Yes, and, and and so I think what ESA is saying is basically what needs to be. Yeah. There needs to be that um, inward looking. 
because mm. political parties are organizations and they need to build their internal party democracy ensure that there is succession plans but be so, more organic so so you grow so, and then be so, become something so else. finally you none of <coughs> none of you expect any fundamental changes in this team I'm, I'm not i'm not expecting. in the udp and what about if you actually will will pavakar now invite no, babili to but it, no babi babili is not oh, babili is done and gone well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. pavakar is concerned He's but not, if, not only Fabakari, but, 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 but if you see, we are seeing, you know, <laughs> anti Farmer Jerumpa is coming in as a secretary. No, I'm, Fabi, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing an, an evolution within the APRC. It okay. might, there might be change of leadership. With there, there I think Fabakari also yeah. maybe because of age or whatever. Yeah, Jerumpa is coming I in. I think he will at some point. Yeah. We will, will give way, but, but, you, but not this soon. My my assessment mm. with political parties in this country, you will think this way and they move this other way. So I, I cannot <laughs> see him going this soon. I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, not this soon, like not what, like, like what, but like, in a few years. Like what, time, what, you, what, you, what are you what you thinking of UDP? Might be the same with him. They, yeah. With FTJ out. I mean, the other side may, the crisis, the other side may capitalize yeah. and say, oh, uh, you better yeah, but, come back. But then with the APRC now, I think they have, uh, you know, most of these people were those that, those that stick with the Fabakari. Mm -hmm. You know, most of them were those that enjoy power before. So they oh, basically understand right. what is there, and I think they will okay. be able to work together. You know, you have the FJCs, the oh, that's Jumpers, a, that's an and interesting all that stuff. analysis. He I, I said, mean, they tested power. They tested power. So, no, they, so, so you want to say they don't want to go out of it? And why were they even forming an uh, alliance? Look at the group. Yeah, look at the people that went with Nam. These are people that are angry. But look at those that violence. went. You know, I it's, it's, it's basic. You when, I, when, I meet the, when I meet them again, I'll tell them. <laughs> <laughs> look at the crew. It's either they were in parliament. They, ah, at least they okay, had enjoyed okay. some sort of, oh, you know, so, some so sort of power. they don't want those days gone forever. I mean, like, you, I mean, politics in this country is I about see. survival. And I, for yeah. being out of government, being in government for 20, 20 years, and you have no plan, and then you're out of government, you had no f economic you know issue yeah. you'll try to look at ways to survive and most of these parties they survive that way good let's talk about books now <laughs> right, this, uh, too much of politics he has long been <laughs> he has long been, should have been brought into the political Let, conversation he, he, he deliberately he deliberately yeah, is that <laughs> okay like what he said this is not departure from the i think what was happening in the past yeah. mm. so in fact there is a poem in this book it is called the country is gone yeah i wrote it in 2018 and the last Versus they are uh, like new Gambia is what can be rush. So since that time, I knew it's just a mirror, so I don't think I'm going to be realized. Ah, good. So there is a chapter that is called. Political. So let's take the point of departure. Let's talk about yes. this. Can I as boy, like you said, doctor. Uh, he's not just a medical doctor, yep. but he is also uh, uh, a very, 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 very good uh, writer. Let me. See. Let me say he wrote uh, several <coughs> publications, and one of them, some of them, we're going to look at now. This is uh, you call this Marikin, Marikin. Marikin. Uh, I think in English it will be Marikin. Marikin, if you look at it, but Marikin is it? Well, this is Mandinka. It's Marikin. Yes, Marikin. You're talking about a tree here, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So and Mar Marikin, I understand, is uh, is 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 really uniquely associated with the village called Jambur. Yes. What inspired Mary Kim? Uh, okay, this is the Indonesian version. Uh, okay. When you look at the end of the introduction, what I said, this book is a uh, celebration of my heritage from Jambu to Combo. Okay. Uh, what, uh, what inspired Mary Kim? Uh, 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 well, uh, maybe the title. Uh, this is the first uh, book of poetry collection that I've done. Okay. I have been writing poetry for, for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, you know, some of my friends and uh, my family suggested to me why can't I uh, collect my, uh, my poems together. Yeah. yeah. So, but when it came to the title, I was actually initially going to call it uh, when I put on my thinking cap. Mm. But during this, I think I read this, uh, Dr. Len Peters, uh, Kachikali. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, oh, it was the point. It's on. Oh, okay, probably we should, we should start introducing him. Doc, Dr. Keba Boya, like you said, PhD and uh, um, MSc in medical. He's also a lecturer uh, of uh, the Gambia, University of the Gambia School of Health and uh, School, School of, of Medicine, Medicine and, and Allied, Allied Health, Allied Health yes. Science. And he is also an accomplished writer. He wrote a lot of poetry, medical poetry sometimes. This book we're talking <coughs> about, Mary King, is inspired uh, by, of course, people who want him to write about his native Jambur. So I want you to talk to us, you as you are doing, how do you come to conceive writing about your native village, the history of your village? 
Well, uh, the history of my settlement, I refuse to call Jamburi village. Oh. <laughs> yes, uh, actually, it's not my, it's not my. But it's not a town. Burfur is farmer. No, it's a town. Jamburi is still 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 in the bush. Anyway, like like I said, I've been writing poetry for for a long time, mm. and one of the people I'm going to give credit to that is Sheriff Bojan. Mm. Sheriff Bojan, 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 Sheriff
Yeah. A little shout of that towards Tintin. Though. That's where that they does are almost for all the conversation, and that's yeah. why you have they move a little bit. Uh, except perhaps Bakao. To more, to more, to except more. perhaps Bakao. Maybe Bakao. Uh, no, we are well. We are coastal people. I think they, <laughs> love, the, they love the coast. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, that's 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 about uh, the book, and it uh, has uh, eight chapters. But what is interesting about this book because I wrote it in in Indonesia, okay. so it has also been uh, translated into into Indonesia. Yes, yeah, that's what so fascinates me a lot. Uh, uh, oh, the, that it must have a lot of followership in Indonesia. Well, so you it have was a lot of you have a, you have a very good you it, know. It was a population actually Indonesia. yes who actually came with uh, the, the idea. idea. Then we had to contract. Uh, this is the uh, the Muhammad Hilal is the is the one who interpreted interpreted the book. To so it's been sold yes uh, in, in Indonesia. Yes. Okay. So this contains both the English version and the Bahasa Indo mm -hmm. Indonesia version. Yeah. And the other old chapter we ha have in this book uh, have contributors about four people mm -hmm. who also contributed their poems and we put it part of uh, this. And I want to thank Dr. Tijan Sala because he oh, yes. reviewed these poems for me uh, before the compilation. And Joy Pikanan was the one who did the uh, who did the editing. The poems are mostly written in Mandinka language or in, in, in English. No, there are seven eight chapters. Eight so chapters. one chapter is a uh, uh, poetry in Mandinka. Mandinka. That is uh, written in the Mandinka script. So it is a scribbler. I think you know a scribbler. Yeah. Scribbler Ba. Yeah. Musa Ba. Yeah. Musa yeah. yeah. Ba was the one who actually did the transcription, transcription. for me into yes the. Even though I wrote them in like the English way, Mandinka, but yeah. I sent it to him and then he put them in the Mandinka person. Mm -hmm. So that's where this Mari key came Come from. from. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Let's move on to the other one. This one deals with uh, medical pro poems, I guess. Yes, this is, uh, the we call it medical poetry. So this is an international collaboration. Okay. So it's a collection of poems from all over the world from Asia, Europe, Africa, and, and in America. So this is basically about, when we say medical poetry, mm -hmm. this is about a poem about medical experience. Mm -hmm. So now we have what we call medical poets. Dr. Landry Peters was a poet, yeah. but he was not a medical poet. poet yes. uh, he was writing poems as a general, but medical poetry is basically about poetry, about the medical Medical, vision. everyday medical language. Yeah, it doesn't, you don't have to be a medical personnel. Uh, to be able to. So it's about your experience, uh, about illness. Maybe you were sick, your family. So when you are taking care, what was the, the experience? Mm. So I know one popular medical jargon: uh, a banana a day keeps the doctor away. No, a poem, a, no, an apple for a day. That's a proverb. Or what? No, I think an apple for a an day. Apple for a, yeah, a banana, an apple, uh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Yes, uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> I, I think that has to do with the benefits you'll have from. Uh, the, yeah, that's right. From, uh, from the, maybe you're talking about prevention. Uh, yes. So, more. so what is also interesting about this book is actually uh, featured on on BBC. Yes, uh, that's yeah, it. That was yeah. interesting. Which year was that? This year. This March. year. It was in March. Oh, okay. Yeah, because Joy Buchanan, who is the editor, the other editor, actually yeah. is from Liverpool. She, she lives in the Gambia. In the Gambia yeah. before. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, because he has a lot of uh, poetry connection there, mm -hmm. so it was true that uh, it's published in... At the BBC, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, uh, well, like when it comes to writing, I know... Yes. How many other works did you do, apart from these two, over the last... Uh, couple of days since you finished your PhD, or <coughs> well, when you were on it? No, I just finished my PhD last year. Okay. Uh, last October I graduated. Uh, in addition to the books, actually, I, I, I am an ACS too, ACS too. so I, I have written so many ACS. Which, then, which, mo which will surprise most people? Are you a science student or are you, <laughs> you an uh, uh, English literature student? Or? No, actually, I am a science student. Mm. I, I, I did not do like literature or art. Mm. But my, my, uh, my history with writing is interesting. I think my interest when it comes to art started when I was in Gambia Senior School. Uh, because during in grade 9, mm -hmm. I, I did 8 subjects and I got one in all of them except English. Wow. So even in French, I did French. So when I went to Gambia Senior, I realized that I was not paying attention to English. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky to have uh, the best English teacher in, in, the, in the Wow, country. You are, here come again. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, Quentin Cummins. Quentin Cummins? Yes. That was which year? 
Uh, this was in 19, from 1995 to 1998. Okay. Uh -huh. So in fact, one of the poems is dedicated to Mr. Quentin Commons here. Oh, yeah. So this, uh, that's on a chapter called Eulogy and Appreciation. Mm -hmm. uh, that poem was uh, inspired by Macmillan calendar. Yeah. So one of the calendars in my room at the medical school, it is written that everybody remembers a good teacher. Oh yeah, even yeah. me, even myself, yeah. I remember yeah, a good teacher. So uh, I'm like, whoa, yeah. this is Mr. Comment. So I for you, uh, that's Mr. Comment. Yes, 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 yes. For all of us, we are game. For me, Sheriff Boy. For you, me, I think Sayata. <laughs> uh, but that's not a teacher. But, yeah. <laughs> For, well, for, for me, me, but for in, me. In, in primary school, I think it was Mr. Mendy. Uh, uh, no, there could only be one. For me, it's Sheriff Boy. Why is it Sheriff what Boy? what level was that? That was primary six. Yeah. But what happened was, after the common entrance, he kept us in the school for the rest of the term, which was about three months, three extra months, from May down to, 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 to July, and August. Kept you. <laughs> and what he did was, he prepared us for Junior. high school stroke, secondary technical school. So when we went there, by that we are in Form 1, we had already mastered yeah, uh, what, what, so we, we had, what our teachers there said they were introducing us to. Oh, okay. So that when I was, when the teacher asked me a yeah, subject, he found that I've already, yeah. <laughs> that wow. if he asked me who was the president of Uganda, he would say, okay, let me start with uh, West Africa. But I will go on until I reach East Central and East Africa. <laughs> oh, and that was due to my primary six teacher. So for him, uh, it was him. Yeah. yeah, so because of Mr. Cummins, uh, you know, I started writing essays back then in Gambia. You know, I remember uh, back then I used to write what people call crazy or stupid. Yeah. Because I remember when we did these chromosomes X and Y, yeah. and I wrote this article, Jesus Christ would have been a uh, female, you know. Because they said he never had a father. Ah, we don't want any black swimming around the no, program. No, what I mean, that, that, that was me, young. <laughs> okay. I, say, you know, I, right. I think it was for the science club, but they never actually accepted that. Mm. that. <laughs> yes. uh, and one of the things I also wrote was like the true meaning of the soul. Mm. But actually I was lucky, that was uh, published in the, the Clarion, it's the UTG newsletter. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether those are new UTG, they, they even yeah, never have those. Do you have those things? Uh, I, don't, I don't think now there's, there's that. I think they need to come with a university newsletter. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. that, so that, that, I remember the Clarion. The Clarion, so. yeah. So I, I wrote about the, the, the true meaning of the soul, looking at the spiritual and the medical aspect to, to bring together. I've written so many things, but I'm afraid I shelf some of them because mm. um, sometimes I have to advise myself the way I think uh, mm. uh, and what I say. Ah, so you might run into trouble with politics. No, 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 not politics. Uh, maybe religion and... Oh, blasphemy and stuff like that. You would think of that, some, something yeah, like that. Yeah, because for me, my, the way I look at things is not the common sense way. You know, there's what we call uncommon sense. Uncommon sense, yeah. So we like, people like saying common sense is common. Mm -hmm. But you know, I always say when we stick to common sense, we are not going to progress. I see. The examples are common sense, man cannot fly. Ah, well. So if he has uh, stuck to that, you will not have been flying or today. Flying today. <laughs> you need to. And I, in medical practice, I said, like, I cannot remember reading in any scripture from a preacher mm -hmm. where in the history somebody was to be delivered and they had to do the seers. Mm. So when you look at the teachings from the scriptures and there was no place where somebody was Should delivered. See, see, okay. So it is out of thinking out of the common sense common. for people that to think of seers. Yes, 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 exactly. It's just like if you say there are certain cure, um, illnesses that cannot be cured. Exactly. Yes. Then we will never find cure. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. So, ah, okay. Uh, so yes, I, 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 I gather you, you also coming in touch with some publication uh, how, how it been published or about to be, is it? Yes, it's been published. It was, it was published, uh, okay. but it was launched yesterday. Okay, how uh, was it? What was the book about and who were the authors? Yeah, so it was published, um, I think, three weeks ago. Okay. Also, um, so the book basically, the title is The Gambia in Transition. Gambia, to, in transition. Gambia in transition towards a new constitutional order. Yeah. Um, the constitution, that constitution, I hope it, it's not a constitution that I've been thrown away. Well, it's a part of it, part of it. <laughs> so it's a book? Yeah, it's a book. It's a oh, book. It was yeah. launched yesterday. Oh, okay. So um, it's the first of its kind. Okay. It's the first book that specifically looks at Gambia in a transition period. Oh. A lot of other books have been written. Oh, well, let me say a few books have been written. Mm -hmm. Historical Dictionary of the Gambia by David Parfait and Adul Hughes. 
Um, you also look at um, State and Society in the Gambia, edited by Professor Sen, Dr. Ibrahim Sal, and Dr. Ibrahim Asise. Um, uh, Paradox of Third Wave Democratization, the Gambia under AFPRC, APRC from 94 oh, really? to 2008, under, by, by Professor so Sen. So much, so much, since the change. No, 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 no. These books are historical. Yeah, historical. Ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this, like, this oh, is okay. historical, yeah. But since these the books are, so, but since the change of government, I think yeah. there is a book also on the 2016 election and the impasse but yes, that is I not should. looking at that is only looking at the election election impact. only yeah but this is the first book mm -hmm. that is published on mm -hmm. the gambia's transition and Ooh. the book is 12th chapter who are the authors um the editors we have um co-editors anyway uh -huh. Dr. Sutton Nabani from Sutton Nabani, the yeah. Human Rights Center at yeah. the University of Dayton in, the, in Ohio, the United States. Shatak, yeah. uh, Mr. Dr. Abebe, Dr. Adem Abebe, and also uh, Mr. Geso. Yeah, I know Geso. The, yeah, Geso yeah. of the International... Who's not recently been recognized. Institute for Human yeah. Rights mm. Development in Africa, mm. IHRDA in the Gambia. Mm. So they edited the book, but they have different contributors. And interestingly, most of these contributors are um, educated. Um, I educated in UTG. Okay. Um, some of us working there. Okay. Um, I'm my humble self. I'm a contributor. I contributed chapter eight. That is um, civil society. You know, democrat, um, elections, democratic restoration and consolidation. Okay. Seku Jame, who is a journalist, also journalist contributed Jame, a chapter yeah. together yeah. with Satan Nabani on media freedom, and mm. I think that will interest you. Ah yes. Um, of course, um, Peter K. Mendy, who also lectures at the university, law faculty, also contributed a chapter mm -hmm. on um, you know the politics of ethnic um, representation in the Gambia, drawing lessons from Mauritius in Southern Africa. Mm -hmm. Also. Um, um, one of our colleagues, Seni Ba, who mm -hmm. was also UTG, um, mm -hmm. works at the IHR, I mean, the National Human Rights Commission, is also a contributor today. But we also have um, others, um, other contributors from outside the Gambia, mm -hmm. um, but also most of these people um, were alumni, so alums of um, the Center for Human Rights, okay. um, the University of Pretoria, where I did my first master's. Mm -hmm. So they are the ones, in fact, that published the book, that is the Pretoria University in, South Africa. Called yeah. in South Africa. Wow. So they published the book. So the Gambian, um, the, the, the book looks at um, cross-cutting issues um, surrounding the transition from, um, the, the, and the focus is we want to see how this book could contribute in you know propelling the conversation around mm -hmm. constitutional reform respect for human rights rule of law and democratic governance in the country especially when it comes to the consolidation aspect so it's divided into three um areas one looks at constitution making the first part of it looks at constitution making in the gambia yeah, okay. from the 1950 1954 1960 mm -hmm. constitution to the 62 wow. to the 1970 republican constitution to the 1997 um, constitution and to the draft constitution of 2020 wow. this was written by david perfect david perfect um, is a household name mm -hmm. um said maria mothers know him wow. if anybody reads um about gambian studies he's right. a guy in yeah. fact his phd uh -huh. was on the gambia, gambia. Mm -hmm. so he has written a lot of materials there's hardly anything that happens in the gambia major political event that that, that he has, that, not that has about. Skipped him, yeah. 2016 How? he wrote about yeah. the 2016 election he wrote up and i think he's the only scholar right now who wrote about i mean that i'm aware of he's the only one who wrote about the 2021 presidential election well, as never well heard of this, oh. who is he? he's um he's at the university of chester um, oh, in in kingdom. Kingdom, yeah. yeah so um he's, he's i mean of recent we have been in touch because he's also interested in some of yeah. my writing. So, Gambian, Gambian. no, no, he's not a Gambian. But I think he's he comes a, to a, Gambia a lot. He comes to the Gambia. He wrote his PhD dissertation in 1987. On Gambia. Um, on Gambia. So, wow. it's quite interesting. And then from there, we also look at, you know, constitutionalism. Mm -hmm. You know, we look at um, issues of um, even women representation in mm -hmm. politics. That's also a chapter written by Satan Nabane. Nabane. Um, looking at, you know, women, you know, in decision making in political positions in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. But also when it comes to the draft constitution a lot of things have been captured mm. but also the challenge we face because it was a very long journey it started in 2019 at some point some people ran away <laughs> said ran away <laughs> by the way. I know, we are, I, i'm waiting for the second volume, the second ah. volume. <laughs> you know, he was supposed to contribute that's, but that's, that's a lot of things is. on yeah. his head oh, yeah, yeah. we are supposed to contribute <laughs> but
in a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders, filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. Innovarex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C, and many more services with the highest efficiency in the oh, so it's not to reflection. Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience. So, so, yeah, so the book um, looks at a lot of issues from constitution making in the Gambia um, to issue of women representation in the Gambia to political representation of ethnic groups in the Gambia to media um, and press freedom in the Gambia to also, I mean, transitional justice, which is very important um, mm -hmm. presently, looking at the TRRC mm -hmm. and of course the draft constitution. But what challenge we faced was when we were writing, the manuscript was there, you know, finally it was supposed to be published, but when the draft constitution was rejected, they had to get yeah. it back oh, to say, yeah. now yeah. some things yeah. have to be adjusted yeah. and all that. Yeah, of course, of course. So yeah. if the draft constitution was passed, yeah. it would have changed a bit. We could have been more assertive in making certain you know, claims or whatever in the book, but when the draft concern was rejected, we are like, okay, we have ah, to we do some whole, yeah, So yeah, yeah, yeah. we did that. So which is fine, and also look at civil society, women representation, and all that. So it's quite interesting, and everybody should try to get the book. It's free of charge. Oh, free! Of charge. Um, nobody is paying for this. We are not selling this book. We are not doing it for business. Where can I find? Online, I can oh, share the, online. Oh, the okay. I mean, in fact, there is a flyer where you just have to scan, scan the, code the code and download, yeah. download it. Oh, or I can share yeah. the, the link with you to download for free. Okay. The hard copies will be available as well. Um, mm. I can try to get one for you and, wow. you know, doctor as well. So it's a very interesting book and especially it is, it is going to be very helpful. The significance of it is that it's contributing to literature on yeah. Gambian studies, yeah. um, especially students that are interested and even researchers that are interested in Gambian studies. Uh -huh. This will be very helpful. Exactly. And that is why, personally, it I've will, taken that um, responsibility to give it to my students to review. Absolutely. <laughs> because every, every semester, uh -huh. I give them book review. Yeah. But sometimes, some of them will be lazy when yeah, I, I give them books that have been reviewed already. already. Uh, uh, they go on the internet and copy paste. Uh -oh. But this time, nobody has nobody a book has review on it because so they, it's not published. They must read it first. So they must read it first before they're able to publish. Ah, that's, that's <laughs> so true. Yeah. Yeah. But, but gentlemen, finally, how do you see the Gambia advertising culture? The, 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 we have great authors who are still alive, but how is the culture of writing now? Are we having new writers coming up? Or we still have, uh, or even those who are writing still have a long way to go in terms of uh, what, what the, I mean, the veterans have been doing. For example, you mentioned um, Dr. Henry Peters, Peters. Peters yes. who wrote, I think he was the first campaign to be published in the African Writers Series, is it? Yeah, he's poet, he's, 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 he's the African he's Writers Series. He's part of poetry also, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he, he, he published the so, so, African so. Writers Series. Yeah. The other popular series was Pace Setters. We had some Sam in there. Meet me in Conakry. Mm -hmm. Meet me in Conakry. Those were the popular ones. The, Do we have any? Balasa was too. Uh, there no, are a lot. Of, yeah, there are no more of. Uh, well, no more of us who got in African writers. No, 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 not African. No, writers, no, 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 not African writers. But no. well, Pesetas, we had only one. I think no, I think, I think, no I think there have been a lot of people writing, but then of course you can separate the writings. Yes. I mean, I like novels, but there yes. are also a lot of people doing academic, academic writing. Academic writing. And those that did academic writing, most of them are not known because of and, course yeah, in terms of the, the academic. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's focused on the academic. Oh, of course, okay. when it comes to Nana novel, Great Johnson's uh, yeah, yeah, Calabash, Magic Calabash uh, was, 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 was And even this guy, Silla, you know, Mong Wendy Monk, and Deepa Omar, something Deepa, Ibu Deepa, Ibu Deepa on the wing. On the, so they've been a lot of you know, i mean gambians generally have been writing yeah but of course for me i feel also that we haven't developed that i mean community yes. yeah there needs to be that community so do we have to rely on people at university for us to bring prolific writers such as the in the, the, the in the legions of the nigerians the the 
um, how to call it? Achebezen. Well, no, Achebe. Achebe. <laughs> Achebe. Achebe. I think, 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 maybe publication they don't yes, have support yes, right, yeah. and even the exposure they, they exposure, don't really yes, yes, there yeah. are a number of gambian writers but who knows i, yeah. I think not long ago they did this uh price presentation yes there was so i same. only read that on the voice mm -hmm. so i never saw it on yeah. the stand ah that. maybe i wasn't even aware of it yes. they they don't don't let me know. and in fact there is another publication there is another competition launch today Oh, um, launch launch today. Today. Um, this is a university student okay and the school of journalism is also launching a book on i think school life oh, really? like at the utg yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, well. so as you said academic people don't, in the academy they yeah there's, there's been you know for academy is part of our job yeah if you don't publish you don't publish you finish yeah well, now finish. they're saying that what, what was dr sayak saying <laughs> now even if you publish you can still publish <laughs> without if but, you don't share it. yeah so you know if you don't share it yeah. you don't and that has been one of the one of the issues but I think also in the like, if you look at those that can access books in Gambia, mm -hmm. the reading community might be very small. Sure, sure, sure. And and so that becomes you know problematic. Yeah, problematic well. for people to yeah, even for write. people to read that. And you know there've been history books like Nim Fall, a lot yes, of those yes, things. You know, of, yeah. and sometimes when I reference those things, they think about it as high school, but it's still very relevant yeah, when you are in the, the university the because got, of Prince yeah, Godwin, Godwin and all that and stuff. I, I understand there is this guy at the GRA. I think he published like oh about yeah, that, yeah drama. is it drama something drama yes. yes. yeah. 25 around 25 books oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, my god drama. i mean but there's some drama cd or something yeah, i mean I you know so me at some yeah. point i save some of my money and i buy gap some of them and i've Dr. never read Lamin Shen, yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah, yeah but, but also so uh, i mean one thing um one interest like the launch yesterday mm -hmm. um the chief justice of the gambia himself was there he was the yep. one who oh. launched the book oh. and he wrote the forward of the book so that shows it's 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 an interesting one professor sen also made a commentary um and of course dr ibrahim Assisi all made praises oh ibrahim Assisi the dr. same ibrahim Assisi in the uk yeah, UK. yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's my it's boss quite my like, former it's quite boss an interesting it's quite an interesting and this is an inspiration for a lot of us yeah and um, because this is also my first um sorry my second book chapter mm -hmm. contribution but the first one mm -hmm. um was you know the chapter three of us wrote it but this one i wrote it um you know individually Sleepless so nights. it's exactly it's my first one um yeah. and then you know with just one or two articles so it's a it's a stepping stone okay. for some of us and it's also an inspiration for a lot of other people out there that mm -hmm. there is a lot to write about this country exactly. but exactly. i think so, like you said the culture of reading in this country sometimes also discouraged you're like yeah. okay yeah. if i write nobody will read but i think we need to keep on writing of course, and of course, you know a lot of people are out there who also want, want to read, to read. That's yes. why one challenge a lot of people face when they go from for the studies is when you want to write on the Gambia, sometimes you find it very yeah, difficult yeah. because the literature aren't there. Ah. So mostly thanks, thanks to media houses. Yeah. If you go to a lot of dissertations today, people who wrote newspapers, there, you see newspaper yeah, articles. Newspaper articles a lot of, yeah. Even that book, if you look at it, yeah. um, some of us have to rely on newspaper articles. Mm -hmm. You know, Kirfatu, Fatu Network, we have to rely on Fat these Baga things. Because yeah. and that's, exactly. that's, why, that's why I keep saying that for us academics, you know we, we have to reference some point yeah yeah so and where we where the media comes for us is you know them being documenting the Document, processes exactly, documenting and, and through that, that process, is why you know, you sometimes can, uh, in the newsroom my boss again will say well ah, you may think that story is not important but exactly. yeah, but remember it's important remember you are keeping records yeah keeping records. It's, it's, somebody it's wants, they want to reference yes, it's you about say it. look sometimes you use them to keep records yes yes so, so i, I remember i wrote this this uh it's yeah. called a nation of insulters, yeah. Gambian politics and insulters. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it was on my Facebook. Then somebody told me maybe you need to publish yeah. in the newspaper. So in case we want to reference, <laughs> and actually it's published, it's published in, yeah. uh, in, in the standard newspaper. So hey, I have to take leave of these university lecturers, otherwise we'll sleep here. But but so you know, I, I just want okay. one of the challenges we have. Like if you write your book, maybe you don't have the market. Yeah. So actually, for me. Uh, Healing Wars, I want to thank Africa Med, Dr. Jai, okay. Sharab, Dr. Ja, Mbawin Clinics. Yeah. These are, uh, you know, clinics actually bought, uh, a, you know, a couple of books, couple of books from yeah. me and, you know, put oh. it at various areas in their, in their, in their clinics. In their, in their and all my, uh, you know, colleagues who actually bought the book. And, okay. Uh, and it was, but uh, are, they still, are, they still on are they still available? Uh, this is out of copy. Oh, yeah. But this, Timbuktu? Uh, yeah, this is at Timbuktu, Timbuktu. and on Amazon. 
Oh, on Amazon. Uh, I also want to thank Serif Boyan Jr. because he was one of the people actually contributed in my poetry. Okay. So because of him, two of my poems were performed on West African Democratic Radio. Radio, so yes. That, yes. So I also yes. want to thank him for, for that. Good. Dr. Keba Boyan, PhD. Thank you very much. University of the Gambia lecturer for... Um, uh, tell me, in the, in, in, in the national medicine, how Meds, do you call it? Medical, <laughs> medical health school of medical school of medical medicine, medicine and, and, and health science. science. And health science. Thank you it's very much. Medicine and all the allied health. And yes. all the allied health. Yes. Right. Thank you very much, Esa and uh, Seth Mati. Of course, familiar faces, and they both lecture political science at the University of the. Now he's the he's the resident one. Oh no 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 no. We have we have on we have on break. He's the resident. <laughs> Let everybody know if they come they should go to. Well, right. <laughs> this has been the brunch. We'll be back next week, and I promise we will have uh, more of uh, uh, literary matters as a common feature in our programs henceforth. So watch out for more writers on this program as we move on. We'll be back next week. Until then, goodbye. Terima kasih. We live in a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders, filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. InnovaRex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C, and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you.